Talk, 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 talk. Hey, 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 what's up, YouTube? This is Vinicius Mateo speaking, and today I'm bringing you another video here on the VMGAMEDROID channel, guys. Well, guys, in this video, I'm bringing you the new version of Nether SX Doys, all right? The modified PlayStation 2 emulator, all right? A patch of fixes here, Nether SX Doys on top of either SX Doys, all right, guys? It was updated recently, and today I'm bringing you a video here testing it on my phone, the A35, all right? From Samsung, Samsung Galaxy 35, it has 6 gigs of RAM Exynos 1380 processor, alright guys? So it's a mid-range phone and I'm gonna test some games on it here and show you some settings, alright? And well guys, what was added in this new version, in this new patch? Updated to version 2.0, okay? Textures and dumping have been updated here and the widescreen patches have also been updated, alright? Alright, the Russian translation has been updated and the covers now appear larger in the game list grid view. New on-screen controls and improved L2 and R2 the buttons have also been improved including the colored face buttons, X, square, circle, triangle. The design turned out really cool. I liked it a lot guys. We also had changes in the game database. The game database was updated through the updated conversion script. Alright? Known issues? Google Play Protect when installing the Android package alright? Here's the thing, you need to disable Google Play's antivirus to install it normally. Black, Ace Combat, Jack Games and several other games have graphical issues. Many of them were fixed in version 4.2.4.8, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, Champions Games and Justice League have several problems with 36.8. For better performance and fewer issues, use 4.2.4.8. Version 4.2.4.8 fixed some things, including game fixes. Let's test it on the Samsung Galaxy A35, as I mentioned earlier. Let's review the performance, configuration, and other details. Right off the bat here, guys, I have the Incredibles game, God of War 2, Need for Speed, Most Wanted. I also have Need for Speed, Underground 2, and I also have a Boomba patch here in the corner, 100% updated, which can't be missing, right, guys? So let's go man, let's start here with the app settings. I'll show you the global settings, but there will be games that need a specific configuration, right? But if you basically do this configuration here, you'll be able to run several games. If your phone is a mid-range phone like this 835 here, all right? It has four gigabytes of RAM expandable by another two gigabytes for a total of six gigabytes of RAM. So let's go here in system. Let's set the cycle rate and underclock to 75, okay? 75% minus one. Cycle skip underclock. You set light underclock here, all right, guys? Here, look, in the affinity control mode, you leave it disabled. It's important that you select this first option here for God of War 2, all right? But in general, you leave it disabled for most games. Leave this option here. Look, process for five enabled, all right? If 5 instant remains enabled, and that's essentially it for the system settings. There are some important settings here. If you want to limit the frames per second in some games, look, there are games here that in National Television System Committee frame rate, they run at 60 hertz, right? 60 frames per second and games here in phase alternating line format, right? Phase alternating line format works here at 50 frames per second. You can also limit it to 30 frames per second if you want to keep it limited so you don't have any problems, okay? But I leave it as default, I don't change anything, this phone can handle it just fine. But if your phone is a bit weaker, you should limit it to 30 frames per second, which will really help with performance, okay? Here in graphics, I set the GPU renderer to Vulkan, okay? I set the internal resolution to 2x here. In some games it works well, but in others you might need to lower the resolution, okay? If you have a weaker phone than this one, I actually recommend setting it to 1x or lower, okay? If you have a phone like the A35, you can run it at 1.5x, okay? 1.5x speed is a good balance, providing solid quality without much loss compared to the original. And it's not that much quality either, right? It doesn't get too heavy. In Bilinear Filtering, set it to Bilinear PS2. Here in MIP Mapping, you leave it on Automatic, the default. Try Linear Filtering, you leave disabled. Anisotropic Filtering, also disabled, okay? Texture blending accuracy you set to minimum and here in texture preloading you set it to full hash cache. Hardware download mode you set it to unsynchronized here, alright? For screen ratio, I recommend leaving it as default, either 4.3 or widescreen 69. 
because from the moment you set it to fill the screen, besides it getting stretched, there are more pixels to render so it ends up being heavier in some way, okay? So by default, I recommend you always leave it on the standard setting but if you want it to fill your whole phone screen, I basically prefer it that way so I set it to fill the screen, alright guys? So you can also set the screen ratio for the cutscenes here, the full motion video screen ratio which is for the cutscenes. You can leave it on the standard setting or set it to widescreen here, alright? Or you can use the screen ratio. Guys, for bilinear upscale, set it to smooth bilinear, alright? I keep widescreen patches on. Here we enable the multi-threaded rendering option, alright? Leave this option enabled here, guys. And basically, I think that's it. Let's go to audio. Here in audio, for the interpolation mode, I set it to nearest. Okay, guys. And for the synchronization mode, I set it to async mix, alright? Our audio is pretty good here too, guys. And basically, that's it, man. In other games, we have to configure it as well. Do a specific configuration. Here in the advanced settings, man, I disable this option here. Look, AD subcorrect in EEFPU, I leave this option disabled. And down here, guys, in the EEFPU round mode, I set it to zero, default cut. And here, EEFPU clamp mode, I set it to none, guys. Here, you also enable the anti-blue. It's usually already enabled, okay? To fix some graphic glitches in the games, you also leave duplicate frame rendering enabled. Basically, that's all there is to it here, alright guys? Now we can move on to the game tests, man. Now it's the moment of truth, now it's time for the tests. So we're gonna start right away with the heaviest one, which is none other than God of War 2, alright? I'm going to go into the game's properties here so I can show you the settings I used, alright guys? The system settings here are basically the same. Like I told you guys, I left the affinity control mode on Emotion, Engine, Vector Unit, and Graphic Synthesizer, alright? Just like this here. One thing that's different is that we're going to change the game fixes, alright guys? In the game fixes, we're going to enable this option here. Look, e time fix, you turn this option on. And let's also enable this option here, man. Look, bit fix, you turn this one on too. This will improve your performance here in God of War 2, alright? Here, yeah, as I showed you in the global configuration, look, add subcorrect in EFPU, you leave it disabled, alright? And here, fast texture invalidation, you leave it enabled too, guys, and basically that's it, alright? The anti-blue is already enabled as I showed you, the rest is just like the global configuration, guys, alright? To run our God of War 2 here, so let's start it up now, let's check it out. As mentioned here in the update, guys, the buttons have been changed, right? So it looks way cooler. I really like this button design here. I thought it was really awesome, guys. So let's go, man. We're already here with God of War 2. This version here is an old version, man, dubbed version. A fan dub, it's completely in Portuguese, and it's running at 60 frames per second smoothly here in the corner, okay? Let's start a new game here, normal mode, and here we're going to have that cool cutscene, right, guys? Let's go. The gameplay is about to start here and you'll see the performance. At times, the frame rate will drop to around 55 frames per second. Apart from that, the gameplay will run smoothly. Okay, guys? With these settings that I showed you, if you have a weaker phone than this, like I said, man, leave the resolution at 1x, okay? And it's going to run smoothly, guys. You can also limit it to 30 frames per second. If you have a weaker device, limit it to 30 frames per second and it'll be all good, guys. Look, it's running well, man. No frame drops. At certain moments in the gameplay, it'll drop just a little bit, man. In some scenes here, right, when there are a lot of particles, the frames per second drops a bit, but nothing that really interferes with your gameplay, okay? In this case here, man, it drops to at least 55 frames per second. The frame rate consistently fluctuates between 60 and 55 frames per second. The quality of God of War is fantastic. Let's dive into the action. It's running smoothly on this mid-range device. This phone costs around 1,500 rays and can play some PlayStation 2 games using Winlator. It can also run some PlayStation 3 games, though PlayStation 3 emulators are still in development. So it's a very interesting mid-range phone. It has 6 gigabytes of RAM and runs games smoothly here, guys. Uh, you can see here the performance of God of War 2 running very smoothly, running really well with these settings here. 
Let's skip this part here, just press the circle button, you can see the frames per second drops a little, but it's not much, it doesn't affect the gameplay at all, really cool. To do the grab here, take this, come here for the grab my friend, bring it on. When I press square and triangle here, it gives a slight drop, but it doesn't affect anything, the quality is really good man. This setup is really cool. And this version of Nether SX2 came out even better, right? It fixed some things from the previous versions. And it's running really well, guys. In the pinned comments, you'll find everything you need to know is in the pinned comment, alright? Just check the pinned comment and you'll find Nether SX2 and the games there, guys. So our beloved God of War 2 is running well here, right? I'm already going to use Kratos' big power here. It's awesome, right guys? The performance of God of War 2 is great here. Look guys, now I'm on the Incredibles. I'm going to start a new game here. As you can see, it's a dubbed version, a really cool version too. I even streamed it on my live channel, playing the Incredibles here, the Incredibles game on the PlayStation 2 emulator. And it runs really well. It's a very fun, really cool game. It's based on the movie and follows the story mode completely, okay? So it's really cool and awesome because it's dubbed, right man? Let's get started, let's go. This is to jump, right? Beginning of the tutorial, let's go. The enemies have already been eliminated, correct? Here, forget it my buddy. Look, it's running well guys, it runs the Incredibles game smoothly here, so there's no need, there's not much mystery, right? You don't need a lot of configuration or anything like that. Here we're going to move forward, look, and there will be more villains here. Hold on my friend, hold on my friend. It's a really cool game, really fun man, for you who, well it's rare, it's the old school crowd watching the Incredibles, right? And it's a really cool game. It's very interesting that back in the PlayStation 2 days, there were these kinds of movie games, man. So I thought it was really awesome too. And the Incredibles game is running well here. The Incredibles game runs well without much configuration and works smoothly on most phones. An extra character just appeared unexpectedly. Let's invade the scene, but watch out. I went straight into the fire. Hold on, my friend. Hold on, boss. This part here is intense, man. There are a lot of enemies in this part. Let's find some weapons to fight them. I grabbed a little health points here, look. And the Incredibles game is running really well here, guys, as you can see. Smoothly, awesome, really light game, well optimized, hold on, get out of there man, get out of there, let's knock this down, look. It's dubbed and subtitled, pretty cool, that's it folks, the Incredibles game running well as you can see, great quality and sync on the Nether SX2. Alright, I recommend it, okay guys. Let's test the racing game Underground 2 Most Wanted performs similarly since both are racing games, okay? So let's show you here a very nostalgic game too. Personally, I'm really bad at racing games. Let's start a new race here, okay? I think it's a new race here. Look guys, a race is about to start. Really awesome. Let's go. Now let's drive around the city. Whoa, this car drifts a lot. As you can see, it's hitting 53 frames per second here, but the quality is nice. Running at 1x here as you can see. And I'm really bad at racing games. Racing games are complex for me as I'm not knowledgeable about them. But for those who enjoy them, it's running well, alright? It's gonna run well here. Whoa, I was supposed to turn there. Now it's bad. I went the wrong way, right? And now? What do we do now? I took the wrong path, but I was able to show that it's running well here. Need for speed. This is underground, right? Underground is running well, guys. It keeps a stable performance here, look. And like I said, man, if you have a slightly weaker phone, lower the resolution to an X there and you'll get better performance, okay? I'm just bold. I like to play with quality. I set it to 1.5x, 2x, as much as I can play, right? The racing game runs great and is awesome. However, I'm not very skilled at it, making it challenging to showcase quality gameplay to you all. 
Guys, we're here with the fully updated bomber patch for the Club World Cup featuring the World Cup theme song. I'm going to do a Club World Cup match here, man, which is going to be between Flamengo and Bayern Munich, guys. Let's play a little friendly match here. Look. Let's try the Club World Cup ball. It'll be tough to play with the on-screen controls, but let's give it a shot. And I already set it to the hardest difficulty, right, man? I'm kind of crazy. And here comes Bayer, my friend. Let's see. Whoever scores first wins. I should have set it to golden goal, right? Turn it over there, my friend. I don't even know what I'm pressing, my god. You should have given me the controller, right, man? To show some quality gameplay. So you guys can see how good I am at Bomba Patch. Bruno Enrique wins and progresses. Arascaeta pushes it forward. I'm at least gonna take a shot at the goal here. Shoot, boss. That's tough, but it's running well, huh, man? You can see here that it's running really well. The Bomba patch on our beloved Android phone. Here, the A35, man. This configuration here is a lifesaver, really, man. Look how well it's running here. Bomba patch. Look, too awesome. De La Cruz. Let's see if I can at least take a shot at the goal, right, man? It's gonna be hard to take a shot at the goal, guys. Let's go. Mali GPU. Okay, guys. Mali GPU. Free kick for them, man. Free kick for them. Free kick for Bayer, and here they come, huh? Their goal. Bayer scored a goal. They're all Bayer's legends, man. Look at this. That's why the gameplay is tough, guys. I called Buyer's Legends to play with Flamengo. It's complicated, right? But you can see, man, that Bomba patch is running well. Bomba patch is running great. The guys scored a goal here, and that's it, guys. Nether SX2 is really awesome. Incredible performance, man. And basically, that's it, right? I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please like it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn on notifications to catch all the videos. This should work on most phones with various processors and GPUs. Thanks. You can use the A35 phone as a reference and you'll have a mid-range phone that will be able to run PlayStation 2 games smoothly with these settings, alright? If even then you still can't play smoothly, man, I recommend you go to system and set it to moderate underclock, alright? It'll try to help, but basically there's not much you can do on weaker phones, right guys? Phones with 3-4 gigabytes of RAM, you can still try, right? But there's not much of a miracle you can do. But basically that's it, I'll stop here. Like, subscribe, enable notifications, and follow me on social media, links in the description. I'll stop here. God bless you all. Until next time, goodbye.